This video is going to be about pyruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle. So we know that at the end of glycolysis, we have two molecules of pyruvate that we have to deal with. So before we can uh, feed those into the citric acid cycle, we have to change them a little bit. So what's going to happen is we're going to convert our pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA is what will actually get fed into the citric acid cycle. But when we do this, we're going to produce some byproducts. So we're going to make one molecule of NADH per pyruvate, as well as one molecule of CO2. But it's important to remember glycolysis gives us two pyruvates. So for one molecule of glucose, we're actually producing two NADHs and two molecules of CO2 in this step. So now this acetyl-CoA will go into the citric acid cycle. So uh, pretty early on in the citric acid cycle, we're going to lose two molecules of CO2. We're going to uh, reduce two molecules of NAD plus to NADH. We're going to produce a GTP. GTP is um, an ATP equivalent, so our cells can use it just like they would ATP, or they can also use this GTP to regenerate ATP from an ADP. Uh, we're also going to produce a molecule of FADH2. And then lastly, we're going to produce one more molecule of NADH. And so, um, again, just like with the pyruvate oxidation, we, uh, when we oxidize pyruvate, we make two acetyl-CoAs. So you'll have to go through this cycle twice and multiply everything by two to figure out how much you would get from one molecule of glucose. So throughout this whole process of oxidizing glucose into different forms, um, we've been extracting this energy. And so the way that we're storing this energy is we're storing it in the form of electrons in NADHs and FADH2s or a GTP um, in the citric acid cycle. And so now we have this energy stored away in these molecules, but now we need to get it back out so we can use it. And so what's going to happen is these NADHs and FADH2 are going to take those electrons to the electron transport chain, where they're going to be used to pump protons and make a proton gradient that will eventually drive ATP formation. But none of that would be possible if we don't extract this energy and store it in these molecules through um, pyruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.